Good morning. You know, Church of the Oaks exists for two reasons. One is to elevate our awareness, expand our awareness of the seen and the unseen. And the other reason we exist is to do all that we can to elevate consciousness so that all of us can spend a little more of this life experience with a consciousness of unity, with a consciousness of we, rather than me. I'm going to begin today by sharing with you a fact. I don't want to freak you out, but it's a fact. Every single human being breathing air on this planet today is going to die, without exception, every single one of us. But the three important questions that we need to ask about this death of every human being is when and how and why. And that's what I'm going to call my message this morning, is when and how and why. I'm going to read you some numbers. And here again, I don't want to freak anybody out or scare anybody. I'm just going to give you some numbers that I hope will expand your awareness about some things, about death. These numbers I'm going to get, I have gotten, I got from the United Nations website. And the last year that they had a full accounting was 2017. But I did some research, and from the year 2000 to 2017, these numbers are pretty much the same. They go up and down a little bit. But they're certainly close enough for each one of us to be aware of certain aspects of death and they're certainly close enough to give us the opportunity to create a perception about this thing we call death. In 2017 there were 56 million deaths in this world. 18 million were caused by cardiovascular disease. 10 million were caused by cancer. 6.6 were caught point million, 6.6 .6 million were called by respiratory disease. 2.5 million from dementia. 2.3 million from dis, dis, digestive disorders. 1.8 million from neonatal disorders. One point four million from diabetes, one point three million from liver disease, one point two million from kidney disease, one point one million from tuberculosis, one million from AIDS, suicide, eight hundred thousand. Malaria, 600,000. Homicides, 400,000. Parkinson's, 340,000. Meningitis, 300,000. Ma maternal disorders, 200,000. Alcohol abuse, 185,000. Drug abuse, 165,000. Conflicts, 150,000. Terrorism, 27,000. Hepatitis, 136,000. Fires, 120,000. Heat and cold exposure, 53,000. 
natural disasters, 10,000. 56 million deaths. And of those, I believe that at least half of those could be lessened if people on this earth changed their eating and habits and lifestyle and made some lifestyle changes. To date, there have been 312,000 deaths from the coronavirus worldwide. That's about as many as Parkinson's has killed. If that were doubled, we'd be about where malaria is. If it were almost tripled, that would be where suicides are. This pandemic is scary because it's brand new. And I think we're doing around the world a good thing by sheltering in place, washing our hands, wearing face masks. Because I think it's giving our medical health community time to learn how to deal with this particular pandemic. But I think when that is done, we have to think about life. I've talked about death all, full time this morning so far. When and how and why. Maybe you have a little better grasp of the magnitude of the deaths that happen every year. But death, like I started out with, it's unavoidable. Every one of us is going to die. I think the important fact we need to look at is life, how we live our life. So many of these diseases could be prevented. We've got a lot of work to do, folks. We've got a lot of lifestyle changes, a lot of eating habits to maybe change. And we've got a, a huge level of consciousness to shift. Like AIDS. AIDS, we're back in the 80s, same kind of thing. But we kind of solved it. Or did we? Last year, a million people died from AIDS. Not in this country, mostly in Africa. And the reason that many people died is twofold. Number one, it's the immorality of the global pharmaceutical companies. If you can't afford the treatments, die. And the other is poverty. Both of those issues could be mitigated if we put, if we united in a consciousness of we. If we really worked at developing ideas and solutions to the problems that humanity has. So we've got some lifestyle changes to make, each one of us, individually. You know, I keep talking about that creating a new, a new normal. What do we want that to be? We've got some changes to make. When are we going to make those changes? And how are we going to bring about these changes? And why? I hope we... The when is beginning right now. Anywhere you look, there are ideas that we can start coming together. You know, I spoke last week about the call to unite. What a fabulous program, what a fabulous movement. However, we didn't see a single word about that on any 
corporate network television station, not one word. The corporate media doesn't want people to unite in love and consciousness. They're quite happy for us to unite in the checkout line at Walmart and Target and Home Depot. Folks, turn off your televisions. Give some real thought to when we are going to start shifting our own consciousness, shifting our lifestyle, shifting our diets, putting pressure on our governments worldwide to deal with some of the problems that are facing humanity and this planet. We have some very huge challenges, I'll call them risks, global warming that we as humans are causing. Atomic weapons and atomic power plants. The risk of pollution and Armageddon is just beyond my ability to even consider. World health. What are we going to do about world poverty? And with the global warming that, that we can't stop, no matter what we do, the refugee crisis is going to be something that it's going to take a lot of effort to mitigate by every society on this planet. So when are we going to begin, folks? How are we going to begin shifting our own consciousness? How are we going to change our lifestyles? How are we going to get together and unite as a global society? And the why, the why is quite simply for the continuation of our species, for the continuation of life. That shouldn't, these decisions shouldn't be made out of fear. They should be made out of positive commitment and intention. And with the intention of allowing and making sure that every human being on this planet will never go hungry, will never have to worry about bombs dropping on their house will be able to be provided with health care to keep their families healthy and alive. And to be able to develop a world economy so that every human being on this planet can know, know what it means to have satisfaction and prosperity and abundance in their lives. When and how and why. We're all going to die, every single one of us. And while we still have this life within our grasp, we still have the ability to experience life. Why don't we give it our best shot to make it a life filled with joy and love and compassion and empathy and fairness and peace. You know, they fought the First World War and the Second World War. They both said, this is the war that will end all wars. They really tried to bring that about when they formed the United Nations. They really tried. But governments throughout the world controlled by psychopaths and sociopaths wouldn't buy into it. There wasn't enough people power to overcome the desire of force and violence and greed. We have the power of God within us. And I don't care what religion anybody practices, 
the unseen is within every human life. And that gives us the power to not only survive, but to thrive. So I'm challenging all of us, me included. When are we going to start making these changes we talk about all the time? How are we going to bring about the changes in consciousness, the changes in awareness that are necessary to provide, to create the new normal we all want to see for our world. And why? Because we are filled with the love and the compassion and the caring of life in every form on this planet. And so it is, my friends.